What's up guys? I'm here! I'm finally here to watch the Broken Ben finale. I'm guessing to see a final confrontation between Vader and Obi-Wan. Terrific stuff last episode, plenty of Vader, kicking Reaver's ass, tearing ships apart and that flashback. Man, Reaver didn't stand a chance, Vader was just too cool for school when he took her saber like that. He's like, please, I don't need my sabers. I don't need weapons at all to kick your ass. We had more focus with Obi-Wan here, handling the situation with Vader, and a nice little moment with Tala, realizing he has to move forward with his life. That flashback was brilliant. It was like it was transporting you back to the prequels. And I'm not even that big a fan of the prequels, but seeing these two was nostalgic as hell. And it was just awesome seeing Hayden Christensen back. He must have loved coming back. I bet James Earl Jones having a hell of a time playing the Vader voice again. He's like, I got the paycheck once more. Yes, you love this voice. So there was some really cool stuff there. Some less cool stuff with this group of rebels or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and then of course they had to have Leia play her part in the escape. I don't know why they have to keep having her do something. They could have just had her stand in the background while someone else fixes the door. But no, she has to be involved. The only one to fix the door, opposed to anyone else, just because of her size. They really got to make these pieces of machinery a bit bigger so regular sized folk can get in there. <laughs> Otherwise how are they going to fix anything? Tala died, so that's the thing. <laughs> But the fact that there were so many more Stormtrooper deaths than to those of the good guys is completely bullshit to me. I mean, they're completely expendable. It makes the Empire look weak as hell. Why couldn't more of the good guys die? I don't understand. If just one of the good guys decided, hmm, maybe I'll put on this Stormtrooper armor, it could protect me in this gunfight. The instant they put it on, they get shot and die. <laughs> That's the only way these good guys are going to get wiped out. So let me get this straight with Reva. She was a youngling. Vader came by, was wiping them all out. I'm guessing Vader struck Reva, but she survived and played dead with the rest of the younglings. I'm presuming she heard the clones refer to him as Vader, so she knows he's Vader. She didn't exactly make it clear how she knew Anakin was Vader. And then she intentionally gets found by the Inquisitors, I guess? Was she seeking them out? Like they said they found her in the gutter. If that's her plan, it doesn't really make much of a difference because it's the equivalent of the Empire taking younglings anyway and turning them into Inquisitors. When she got trained, when she turned to the dark side and become an Inquisitor, how did she keep that mindset of like, okay, I'm not with these guys still, I want to go after Vader, compared to anyone else that's become an Inquisitor? But what's more is she's just as bad as Vader, the things she's done as an Inquisitor. Like just stabbing people, chopping hands off, whatnot. I'm sure she's done many terrible things. She must have known she'd do bad things when she joined the Empire. I don't know, Vader kills her friends, and so she thought, I know I'll join the Empire and do terrible things as well in my quest to stop Vader. It just feels a bit off writing wise. Well, at the very least, they're not really selling it to me. I guess you could just say she's a bad person as well and she wants revenge for what Vader did to her but I just wish they'd put more effort in the storytelling so I could understand her character a bit more, what she's going through and what she's trying to do. And you went through all this anyway and you couldn't even hold a peg to Vader. <laughs> it's like, what was your plan exactly? Did you think you were that good, that powerful, that you could challenge Vader like that? That just felt completely naive. Like, what was the point of all this? Did you not even consider like, hmm, how am I actually going to beat this guy? Or did she really think striking him from the back was going to work? Like a sneak attack or something? Like, Vader's too good for that shit. Imagine if the death of Vader in the Return of the Jedi was he was just standing there and Luke just went out of nowhere. Like, man, this is supposed to be one of the most ruthless evils in the galaxy and that's what finishes him off? At the very least, a distraction with Obi-Wan would have been good. Then she might have been able to do it because Vader was blinded by his obsession for Obi-Wan. But no, I'm still confused on what this plan was. Like, did Reaver and Obi-Wan come to an agreement or not? Saw a shadow of Obi-Wan taking out those stormtroopers and getting away. Maybe there was no plan. Maybe he just got away and Reva saw Vader on his own and went for it. Or maybe Obi-Wan just screwed Reva over. They were like, okay, you take him from the left, I take him. Right. All right, I see you later. Good luck with Vader. He was gone. He didn't give two shits. <laughs> he was like, I'm not facing Vader. Are you crazy? I actually wonder if the combination of Obi-Wan and Reva would have taken Vader out. But then again, the Grand Inquisitor was hovering around as well, so he might have joined in in the fight, so I don't think they really stood a chance there. So yeah, anything to do with Reva's just been pretty confusing. I appreciate they finally gave her some backstory, but they should have started this from the beginning. They should have given some depth to her as we went along so we could connect with her character, not just reveal her story near the end. Plus, you could have done this a lot more cleaner. 
you could have Reva find Obi-Wan early on and they can make this plan on how to take down Vader. She could have went to him and just like, I've been obsessed with you, looking for you for so long because I think you're the only one who can help me take down this guy. And throughout this series, we see them making this plan and we're also finding out more of Reva's intentions and her back history and what's motivating her to do this. Then when they finally entrap Vader, it's just them two and him. You could have this badass two-in-one fight. Maybe at some point during the fight, Obi-Wan gets lost, like he falls down a duct or something, and it's just Vader and Reva going at it. And then Vader kills Reva, and you're like, oh, poor Reva, because we connected with her more as the series went on. Obi-Wan would also have a connection with Reva, so when she dies, it would just affect him, and it would instill in him, okay, I've got to do this for Reva, and whoever else has fallen at the hands of Vader. He, he like, snaps out of his, like, bewildered trance, just this hermit crab mode, you're just like, okay, I have to watch over Luke. He's the only hope we have of taking down Vader. You know, anything like that where we get to see some character development with Reva. I mean, you could also have her at the start of the series just full-blown dark side Inquisitor mode, but then she learns some information gradually and it just snaps her out of it. It's like, oh my god, what am I doing? I'm working for Vader. I shouldn't be doing this. I used to be a Jedi. We could see a storyline where she snaps out of it and she's slowly getting more distant from the dark side. Maybe she befriends someone and she defends them by taking out a couple of stormtroopers. And that was the moment where she realized, okay, I can't do this anymore. And she hates Vader for what he's done to her. So she plans a way of taking him down. Anything like that would probably be better than what we got here, where it's just visibly nothing until the second last episode where we understand her motivations. I get it's some kind of bombshell reveal or something like that. And there's a little tid pieces with how she knew Vader and what's this obsession with Obi-Wan. But I just don't think it was enough. I didn't feel it enough. It didn't make me give a damn enough to go, oh shit, this is a great character. This is someone that I want to watch plenty of times going forward. So from this finale, I do expect one more confrontation between Obi-Wan and Vader. I'm not sure how. And then, of course, Leia goes back to Alderaan, Obi-Wan goes back to Tatooine. And then we'll see what happens with Reaver, I guess. I don't know if Bail Organa might die here. We don't know how he died. We don't necessarily think he might have died when Alderaan blew up. It might have been before that. He said he was going back to Tatooine. But he's been a bit of a shithead here. <laughs> I've completely turned on him in this series. So if he dies, it won't be the worst thing in the world for me. Yeah, you were cool before, Bell, but yeah, yeah, you played your part. So get out of here. You've been nothing but trouble this series. You could have gone after Leia at the start of all this, for crying out loud. And then here you are giving away messages on the location of Luke. Probably the most stupid thing in this entire series. Why the hell would you do this? So Reva going to Tatooine is the only thing where I'm like, hmm, how's this going to play out? Everyone else, I know how it's going to play out. And let's not forget that the Grand Inquisitor stabbed her and she's still surviving. Like, why is she still surviving? Didn't she not get slayed by Anakin when she was a youngling? Has she been attacked twice by Sabres and she's survived both times? It's weird, you got her ass kicked by Vader, but at the same time you're making her look overly strong on how she keeps surviving everything. It's a weird combination. Just die already. We're done with you. <laughs> Why are you coming back? So yeah, even though the series for the most part has been underwhelming, hopefully we can knock it out of the park with this finale and have at least a memorable, strong ending here. So here's my reaction to Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 6. Ooh, we're back on Tatooine. I wonder if that asshole Jawa at the start of the series is still hanging around. Keep it real, Jawa. She's on planet. What was the point of this? Is he, is she good now, defending people? I'm looking for a farmer. Oh, she just wants info. Name is Owen. What was the point of that arsehole at the start of the queue? <laughs> Were they trying to make her look badass or something? <laughs> Very weird. They're after him now. Of course they'd be after them. I don't think they get away that easy. I don't care about any of these lot. I don't care about any of these people. We didn't need him in this series. Be gone. We need a new belt for this theater. Is this Luke? Somebody hey. The last one. <laughs> Your uncle's a patient man. I'm not that patient. He's a grumpy sod, isn't he? Jesus Christ. Oh, it's good to see um, kid actor Luke oh, doing something here. You've spent ten years protecting the Jedi. 
This is my chance to return that favor. Is this what that lot do? They protect the Jedi. This plan makes sense. No, we need you. It'll buy you the time you need. Are there Jedi here that can maybe help? You're what needs to survive. Is this the rebellion? No. I don't know what this group is. Leia, I find she needs to be given space. Just you must promise me that you get her home, Haja. As soon as. What I'm do you care, Haja? You didn't give a shit about her last episode. Fake Jedi may not mean much to you. It's good enough for me. I don't know. I'm still off on his character. Like, what are your motivations, dude? <laughs> Funny as hell, though. You hide somewhere. Where? In the desert? I'm not leaving my home. At least here we have a chance. What? We need help. I'm not You'll putting die. else in danger, Owen. We're not putting anyone else in danger. You and me. What? It's a stupid move. You'd get out of there. You're under threat. Oh, a garden that will help against the dark side saber user. Is she a moron? <laughs> is she a moron? <laughs> what are you doing? It's empty. Well, I wasn't going to give you a blaster, Leia. You're two yeah. years old. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you did, and that she was but good with it. Yes, reference she'll be Leia in the future. We know. <laughs> Ugh, what a waste of time having Leia in this series. Seriously. I promise. Does he fulfill that promise? Technically not. These guys will never see each other again. I mean, she'll contact him via hologram. Face him, master. Liam Neeson. Whether he dies. Or Liam Neeson. Pop up. Today. Where are you, master? Are you ready? No, <laughs> no, Liam Neeson. <laughs> Wipe out this network in its entirety. I get the feeling these guys associate with the rebels. Lone Jedi. He is you make not sense. just any Jedi. Oh come on. I know. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. Kenobi. At once, Lord Vader. The Grand Inquisitor that makes sense. I don't know. It does it make sense for Vader to envelop in his feelings, obsessed with Obi Wan, or is it like the smart thing to be to take out the rest of them? I don't know. Was that good writing for Vader? I can't decide. <laughs> I don't know. If anything goes wrong, you you know what to do. You run. I'm not afraid. I know. Run. Everything's gonna be fine. It'd be nice if one of these kids actually were afraid. It's gonna be okay. They are still kids at the end of the day. He's only known growing up at the farm. I will face him alone. I will destroy him. You think at least Vader would have said, I will send another ship, another convoy to go get the rest. No, they just completely let them go. Oh, the more I think about it, the more stupid it is. Who would have thought the Grand Inquisitor, the guy who I thought was dead, was the voice of reason here? At least send Grand Inquisitor after them. Is this why we don't see Lola when Leia's older? She left her room. You've been nothing but trouble, Lola. Nothing. You've been destroyed, you've been evil. I'd get rid of you entirely. Let's do this thing. Come on, Obi Wan. Here we go. Meet again. I can feel the intensity. Have you come to destroy me, Obi Wan? I will do what I must. I will do what I must. Nice reference. Then you will die. Ooh. Can he destroy him? Like, does he have the will to do it? Or will his emotions get the better of him? Yeah. Everyone's getting a bit of his skill back. It's even better having the flashback in the last episode and seeing how we've come to this point. Where are we going with this, exactly? How does this end up? 
what are we doing? Like, have we forgot to bring up that she survived being impaled like that? <laughs> they don't even bother to show her healing or anything like that. Come on. Ooh, that plant will stop her. Go, plants. Ooh, that case. Come on, she would have wiped them out ages ago. Use the damn force. Ooh, lunge. Now you're getting it, everyone. Now you're getting your flare back. Oh, put him off. Oh shit! Battle of the Force! Your strength has returned. It has. He has the passion. But the the weakness still remains. It has still been a while. <laughs> still giving you a run for your money, though, Vader. Oh shit! Oh, he tricked him up! Watch out! Ooh. Use the rocks more to your advantage. Oh my god! You will always know. <laughs> oh man, Vader! <laughs> yes, Vader! Man, he just caused a mini earthquake there. You always lose! Oh no! Piling! Oh no! Oh no! It's flattening him tonight, no tomorrow! Ah! Oh man! Mega pile up. That's the thing he's beating. You have failed, you have failed. master. Oh, nice. Referring him to master at the end. He is my own. Do anything to protect. That's the best quality of own. Oh come on! What do you want? I'm assuming she's weaker because of the wound she got. Still, she can easily kill these two. Easily. That's so stupid of what's her name saying. Let's stay here! We have to hold our ground! <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Get the hell out of there! You knew he was going to be attacked by someone. Who just stays in their home waiting to be attacked? It's not home alone. I'll set some paint cans here and there. The voices. Haunting him. You must protect the children. You have a mission. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's really setting out to kill Vader. He knows what he must do. He's, re he's reached that point now. He senses something. A presence he's not sensed since. This moment, actually. <laughs> this very moment. <laughs> oh, look at Obi Wan go! Shit! <laughs> you gave me rocks. I'll give you rocks. Ooh! Ooh! Vader's feeling it. Obliteration by rocks. <laughs> Take this! Oh man, what a planet to do this fight on! Play those games, are you, Obi Wan? I'll oh, just destroy all the shit. Take this whole area down. Uh, what are we doing here? What is the point of this? Is it gonna look like Reva's gonna kill him, but not kill him? She'll just say something to him. I don't know. Go, Obi. Oh, yeah, get the control panel. Oh, oh, is he gonna do the wheezing sound now? Oh, he's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah, there's the wheezing sound. <sighs> He's actually doing it. He's actually wearing down Vader. Uh, oh! Oh, the mask! Oh, shit. I guess if it is his face. Wow, I hope we wanted to really. Has him to rights it. Shit. There's the classic face. Anakin. Anakin is gone. Ooh. Some of his old voice there. It's actually Hayden Christmas in there. Anakin has gone. I'm sorry. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Anakin. It's breaking him up seeing him like this. For all of it. I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. 
I did. Oh. It's actually admitting it was him. He's relieving everyone the pain of his guilt. The same way, I will destroy you. Wow, that was a surprise from Vader there. Then my friend is truly dead. Say it's not you, Obi Wan. I did this to me. Friend is gone, Obi Wan. Goodbye. Darth. By Darth. See, he's fully admitted it now. He's transformed. Obi Wan! Well, you're letting him go. Well, this makes sense now with the whole. We left you, I was the learner, now I'm the master. So I guess Obi Wan had to kind of beat him there. Obi-Wan! Oh, that merging of voices. Love it. Oh, man, that was a sick scene. That was really good. I was surprised by that. Like, Obi-Wan, um, Vader admitting that. It was almost like a part of Anakin reaching out to Obi-Wan. It's like, it wasn't you, man. I did this to me. That like, really good stuff. Are we still chasing this kid? Come on! For the love of God. Senses Luke. Senses him in danger. He's not going to get there in time, surely. Should probably realise, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm just doing the same as Vader. Although you've done many terrible things up to this point, so I don't know why now you'd have a conscience. I don't even know why she wants to do this. Why is she going after Luke? She's obsessed with Vader, ain't she? What's the point of doing this? I don't understand. And why was so much of this episode dedicated to this little chase here? Baru is such an idiot. <laughs> Owen can now go to... See? See what happens when we stay here? Oh, who it is? Reva bringing Luke to them. Thanks for wasting our damn time and wrecking our place for nothing. This whole thing was pointless. <laughs> she should have just died. <laughs> I guess this is some growth for Reva that she's learned. I cannot be like Vader. I failed him. Failed who? We killed them all and I couldn't do it. You have given them peace. Who and she failed? Them. How is she honouring her friends by murdering another youngling? Oh gosh, is she going to be a standing character? I thought she might be. Ugh. They'll have to do better than this with her character. They'll have to, going forward. At least she's showing, like, some sort of growth here. A bit of emotion. I'll give her that. She has something of a character development. <laughs> it just hasn't been a very good or entertaining one. But I guess we'll have to see which show she pops up next in, I guess. You're free. We both are. Yeah, you're both free from the hold of Vader. I don't think Vader's happy with that <laughs> departure. Are tracking every system within range. Now he's even more obsessed with finding him. Oh, Sidious! Yo! My friend. Yes, I had my ass kicked by him. Be me again. We will fight him. I wonder if your thoughts are clear on this, Lord Vader. Of course they're not. It's personal. Perhaps your feelings for your old master have left you weakened. Ah, could excuse why he lost. If your past cannot be overcome, Kenobi means nothing. Ah. I Vader still had growth. Only you, my master. My master. Hey, that makes some sense. I think how Kenobi could beat him after years of not fighting. They had him grow a bit. Vader was still held back by his obsession, made him weaker. I think that makes sense. Yeah, Vader. <laughs> nice little moment there. And we got to see Sidious. Yeah, yeah. I survive until the last, the Return of the Jedi. 
not the sequels. I only die in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I only die once. So that group dropped Leia off, and that was it. I can't believe they just let them go like that. Jeez, they? Only for Vader to lose a major defeat for the Empire. Is that a holster? Hell yeah, it is. Now give me a gun, mother. <laughs> give me a gun. I love it. <laughs> You should warn your child you're not getting a gun, though. <laughs> Why has Obi-Wan got to warn her of that for not her own mother? I fear for her future. The Empire grows stronger. You should worry about yours. <laughs> well, if you ever need my help again, Obi-Wan's like, where to find me. will you shut the fuck up with those messages next time? You are wise, discerning, kind heart. Yes, we know who she becomes. She's Leia. These are qualities that came from your mother. But you're also passionate and fearless, forthright. And these are gifts from your father. Oh, I gave a nice nod to Anakin there. But we must be careful. No one must know, or it could endanger us both. The fact that you're here isn't a very good move, is it? Otherwise, you could just visit her at any time, couldn't you? Wait, oh, Obi Wan. Goodbye, princess. D D May the force. She said, Obi Wan. You know who he is. So why are you so formal in that hologram message in A New Hope? You served my father in the Clone Wars, like stuff like that. You helped save my life. <laughs> the... So that looks dumb. I have no idea why this Leia storyline was in the show. Why it needed to be in the show. So he can just come back whenever he wants, essentially, because he's done it here. <laughs> so he was just being rude and never wanted to visit them. <laughs> Maybe Leia forgot about him. I don't know. You want to meet him? Ah, oh. that's nice. Seems like everyone's had a bit of character development here, apart from Luke, who doesn't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> Hey Luke. What up? Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> you got a hello there. <laughs> of course he did. Hello there. <laughs> oh, if that wasn't intentional. <laughs> oh. Who's this? Liam? Master Qui-Gon. Master Qui-Gon? Hey! Oh. <laughs> <Long enough. laughs> hey, we did get him. Beginning to think you'd never get long enough. I was always here, Obi Wan. Hell to the end. Just when I'm ready to see. And now he's ready to see. Come on, you've got a ways to go. Hey, so he's not completely alone. He can chill with his old master. Oh, also they brought Liam Neeson back for a little show in there. Sweet. And he moves forward, I guess. There you go. Obi-Wan moves forward. And there we go, Obi-Wan is done. <laughs> I would say overall coming out of it, initial thoughts. Um, yeah, I think it was a pretty solid ending to the series. The series as a whole, I think, was a flop. There was just too much shit going in the way of it, holding it back. But... The last couple of episodes, they did hone in more on the Obi-Wan Vader stuff. More of the stuff leading up to the uh, original trilogy. I think it makes sense in my mind of Vader losing to Obi-Wan. Even though Obi-Wan should lose because he's very rusty. Even if he did have a sudden surge of power motivated by his thoughts for the children. I'm glad they had that scene there with Vader and Sidious. That Vader still had a bit to overcome considering his attachment to the past. It's like Vader himself still had a bit of growing to do, a bit of learning, and that was his downfall on his loss to Obi-Wan there. And that tied nicely with him saying that he was the learner last time. He was still learning. That obsession got him careless, so obsessed with trying to kill Obi-Wan, it was his downfall. 
So I think that works pretty well. I think that comes together nicely. Now there's the question of the dark side usually tapping into emotion to give them their strength. And Vader definitely had a lot of emotion <laughs> when it comes to Obi-Wan. But I think Sidious highlighted there's a difference when it comes to your past holding you back. And I think that was suppressing Vader from reaching an even greater potential, which I think Vader is overcoming now. So he's going to let go of the past and go, okay, Kenobi is nothing. If he pops up, okay, but I'm not going to spend my whole time searching for him. We go after Jedi and wipe them out, sure, but we're also an empire and we can't use all of our resources just trying to find one Jedi. So who would have thunk it? Vader had some character development here. I never would have imagined that. But that tied nicely in having Vader have his defeat and, you know, connecting with the original trilogy. So I love that. I loved everything everything to do with actually no there was one moment <laughs> the moment where he might not have sent a convoy after the rest of the good guys brandon chris is like we could go after these guys you know shut down this network vader's like no <laughs> and that does pertain to you know his past holding him back making him so focused don't know everyone but you would be smart here. You have loads of troopers and resources and that. You could send some of them and Grand Inquisitor himself to go after the convoy. So a bit of a cop out there. You could rewrite it that Obi-Wan knows he needs to kill Vader early on. And so he intentionally let Vader know he's going out on his own on his own ship. The convoy go their own way. Vader tells his troopers to go after the convoy and Vader himself will go solely after Obi-Wan. That way they have two paths, they're both doing their own thing, it makes sense and it doesn't make Vader look a bit stupid there. The whole Reva Luke thing, this was a waste of time. Why did we need this? <laughs> Owen and Beru, what, why? Why did you not leave? Why was Beru insistent that they stay there? I'm amazed Reva didn't kill them both. And it just looks so stupid that they're just like holding a bat like that. Like they wouldn't do that. She could choke them easily. And Owen was just kicking plants and suitcases. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's just, oh my God, it's so horrible. Even with her injury, she could have taken them both out easily. There's no excuse there. And then spending such a long time with her chasing him. All of that, just so Reva can have a moment of like, oh no, what am I doing? Even though she's done loads of bad shit before, I don't know why she's there because she's detached from the Empire now. I don't get any of this. She says she failed them. How does going after Luke honor them? She should have had this breakdown moment after her loss to Vader. Like, if she couldn't beat Vader, then she would go, oh, I failed them, because he's the one that killed her friends. I appreciate she had some character development, that she broke down there, and she's like, what have I become? But it's just a completely wrong moment to do it. It should have been after she lost to Vader. There's just weird inconsistencies with her story. I appreciate they gave her some character development towards the end here. She was less shouty-shouty, we got to know a bit more about her, and she was breaking down there. Just the way they did it, the execution was bad. And I don't feel any more closer to her because of it. I'm just questioning things. If we are going to see her character more going forward, they'll need to do a better job than that and put her through some more storylines where we can connect with her more. Maybe they need to give more details towards her past on how she got to the position she did. In terms of her story here, though, I don't think it was very good. And in terms of an Inquisitor storyline, I don't think it was very good. What happened to the other Inquisitors that she was battling with? They just got completely forgotten about. Plus, she seems indestructible at this point. I think they slayed her twice and she survived. <laughs> Could she survive the Death Star? What will take her down? Nice little moment with Obi-Wan telling Leia her attributes from her parents. But it's just so much sucking up to the Leia character. That's all I see in Kid Leia in this series. It's just all sucking up to the Leia we know in the original trilogy. You could have rewritten this without Leia. She didn't add anything at all for me in this. It just felt like, look, Leia's here. Look, remember Leia? It's, Leia. it's Kid Leia. At least with Luke, it's Obi-Wan series. He's overseeing Luke, so we have to see Luke. Good seeing young Luke, though. He's just like, oh, hey, don't forget about me. I'm here. Yeah, it's like, oh, I get to meet Obi-Wan now. Hey. Nice little moment there, those two meeting. And we even got a hello there. <laughs> nice touch. And we got Liam Neeson back. Hell yeah. He looks a little older, but there was nothing you could do about that. And he was just there waiting for Obi-Wan until he was ready. He was like, finally, <laughs> you're here. Now let's chill, have a beer. Hell, I would have had Liam Neeson more in this series. Pop up giving wise advice to Obi-Wan on what he would do in certain situations. That'd be pretty sweet. But I shouldn't complain. I should be glad that we got what we got. The point was Obi-Wan was so blocked off from the force and everything. He couldn't connect with his old master. And now he's finally ready. He's gone to a place where he can connect with him now and speak to Force Ghosts. We've seen the first moment where he could actually do it and speak to Force Ghosts, so that's really cool. We've seen a few things here from Obi-Wan where he's like, okay, this is a nice 
growing moment between three and four on how Obi-Wan became old Ben. It was a really good idea having Liam Neeson and Hayden Christensen come back. It gave that extra Star Wars-y feel to the series when it needed it most. Although I will say it's ultra stupid of Obi-Wan coming to Alderaan. I thought the whole point was he was supposed to lie low on Tatooine watching over Luke. Now he's just hopping planets whenever and you think he would have seen Bell and Leia a bit more as he got older. If you could have gone there then, you could have gone there whenever you wanted, which adds even more questionability to the hologram message Leia sent to Ben. That message should have definitely been more like, hey, old buddy, man, we had a lot of good times, didn't we? You popped over, I came over to you, we had some parties, yeah. Forget my dad and the Clone Wars. How you been? I see you growing that beard there, looking very sophisticated, yeah. That fight though between Vader and Obi-Wan, <laughs> that was sick. I loved every second of that. And what a great environment to fight in amongst all the rock and rubble. Awesome moment with Obi-Wan being suppressed by all the debris and like the flashes of the kids in his mind, even though Leia's there, it's like, okay. They were a motivator for him to go on and fight for them. Like he has a duty to protect them from Vader and the Empire. So he's like, I've got, to, I've got to wipe out this man. I've got to go after him. Very questionable though, why Obi-Wan didn't kill Vader. Like he's right there. I know there's emotional attachment here. But you know the damage he could do, the evil he can inflict. You said yourself that your friend is truly dead, that he's daft now. Like you've, It looks like you've come to a point now where you've accepted that. So just kill him already. I guess when setting up this moment, they couldn't think of a way out of it. So they just had Obi-Wan walk away. I know Obi-Wan had to best Vader to keep in line with this learner-master relationship until their next fight maybe you could have had the empire watch over them and then they saw vader was in trouble so they shot at them and interrupted the fight so obi-wan had to get away something like that you know just to separate the two because i feel like obi-wan really should have killed darth especially realizing that his friend is just totally gone now but other than that i thought this was all fantastic especially when he chopped off vader's mask there and you had a mixture of darth's and Hayden's voices there, that was like chilling. Two of the most chilling Vader moments for me in Star Wars since Disney acquired it was this moment and the finale of Clone Wars where we just see Vader for the first time at the end of Clone Wars. I think he saw Ahsoka's saber at the end looking in the distance. It's like, wow, he's fully transformed. Look where we are now. And it felt like there was a bit of Anakin in there reaching to Obi-Wan like, it's not your fault. This is me. I destroyed me. It's like, I did not expect that moment. That was a powerful revelation there. It's Anakin admitting that he did this to himself and alleviating Obi-Wan of this guilt in the part that he played in it. That's huge. Before that, Obi-Wan was in tears. He was saying how sorry he was. He was just broken seeing him like that. And then following Vader's confession, Obi-Wan just came to accept, okay... You're no longer the person I knew. You're just daft now and I'm done with you. And Vader's done with Obi-Wan now. This little personal feud they've had together following the events of episode 3. They've come to terms with it now and accepted it and are now going their own way. If they meet again, they will clash. But until then, they've accepted what's happened. They've come to terms with it and are ready to move forward. Great growth moment for both guys. This is probably the best moment of the entire series. It was a really nice crescendo for both of those characters. Might I say the rock throwing was blowing my mind when Obi-Wan just lifted all those and pummeled Vader with it. It's like, oh shit, <laughs> Obi-Wan ain't playing games now. <laughs> defend yourself, Vader, defend yourself. And the rest of the good guys in that convoy, I couldn't give a shit about. <laughs> they kind of just popped out of nowhere and I was like oh hello I guess you're in the story too does this group have much involvement with the rebellion I don't know I don't know if the rebellion had much involvement in gathering Jedi maybe this group's priorities changed again wasted characters I think any character on the good side apart from maybe fake Jedi dude was a waste of time in this series. I just couldn't get involved with them whatsoever. It was only Obi-Wan I was focused on. For the most part, it was the same with the bad guys. I was mainly focused on Vader. I get introducing new characters, and I think you do need new characters to keep this story going on a bit, because you can't just have solely Obi-Wan and Vader, unless it's a very short series. But they were just so bad at it. The best material in this show was harping back to content that Disney didn't even make. <laughs> it's harping back to the original and prequel trilogies. Anything new created by Disney was either uninteresting or trash for the most part. So coming into this series, we knew what we wanted, Obi-Wan and Vader, and 
coming out of it, we definitely knew that was the stuff they should have focused on because that's what we wanted and that was the best stuff they gave. So this series for me was definitely a mixed bag. I'll have to think on it a bit more. I might do a review on the series. But it was, for the most part, a downer. It wasn't very good. It had a good start and a pretty strong last couple of episodes. But there was just so much filler in here, especially in the middle of the series. Episodes 3 and 4 were such a drag. It was almost like two paths in my mind. There's like the, yeah, let's feast on the stuff that we liked about Star Wars. And then, okay, we've got to put up with the new stuff that Disney's creating. Let's just get through this. And even though I love the stuff they did with Obi-Wan and Vader here, it makes me wonder, is it still worth it having Disney creating endless new content for Star Wars? Is it worth Disney having Star Wars? Am I enjoying Star Wars under Disney right now? Are these moments that I'm enjoying enough for me to go, yes, this is a great idea having Disney do what they're doing with Star Wars? And at this present time, absolutely not. But that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> in terms of this series, I'm going to let it mull over more in my mind. But yeah, this wasn't like a lightning strike of golden entertainment for me. When it was good, it was really good. But there was so much lackluster shit in there. It's like, for the love of God, take this out or rewrite it. But at least I can say for the most part, they did good by Obi-Wan and Vader. Like, they did some good shit. I feel like their characters have grown. And it's a nice little chapter for both of their stories. At least I can take that from this series. That final encounter there with half of Vader's mask off and that, that exchange. I think that will be a big highlight for me when thinking back on this series. But then I'll also remember all the shit. And it's like, no, don't touch that series again. Remember all the bad times. Just go on YouTube and look up that clip between Obi-Wan and Vader. You'll be fine. So that was my reaction to episode six, guys. Thank you very much. And if you watched all my reactions to this series, thank you very, very much. I hope you got some entertainment out of it, watching my reactions and thoughts as I've gone through this series. I very much appreciate it, and it really means a lot. It's been a wild one for sure. There's been moments where it's like, oh yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. Others where it's like, oh, just please let it end. And then others are like, oh, that's pretty good. I, I'm very intrigued to see more. A very <laughs> mishmash of emotions and feelings. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this series, your best moment of the series, your least favourite, any changes you would do to make it better. Did you guys enjoy all of the Obi-Wan Vader stuff, especially when they were together? Or could you have gotten a bit more out of it? Any support for the channel would be fantastic. Like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, I will see all you legends later. Take care.